Welcome to .NET Training Academy. Today we are going to talk about an interesting topic which is API. API is very popular thing and also an unsung hero which we are all using in our day-to-day -day lives. API means Application Programming Interface which has a lot of explanations and definitions over the internet and also in the Wikipedia. But to be simple, in my point of view, API is independent data which can transfer uh, from uh, independent to devices, platforms, programming languages, etc., etc. Basically, API uh, used via the format JSON or XML. The data will be transferred in these formats. So application programming interface is basically uh, used in a lot of applications like Facebook, Google, and also in YouTube kind of big companies and also in small companies. Uh, now we just talk about this in an illustration. So we are all having different devices, different uh, platforms. For example, mobile, smartwatches, computer, laptops. And all of these devices are connected uh, inside a single uh, web API. For example, a Facebook is application uh, has, uh, which is available in mobile and smartwatch uh, computer and also in the browser we are using Facebook's in uh, all the devices all over the world so the devices are uh, separated but everything is connected uh, to the web API how it is connected and how it works to be simple, uh, these two things happen at uh, all the platforms and devices, which is request and response. If we send a request to the web API, it will respond accordingly. And the web API is connected, uh, with, which is hosted in a server, and that server is connected to a database. Database has a lot of data where it can fetch the data and store the data, update, delete, it can do a lot of stuff. But when it comes to API, we are uh, using RESTful APIs nowadays. So it has four different patterns. One is create, read, update, delete, which is in simple actual terms, get, put, delete, and post. And there are a lot of other uh, other uh, requests, but these are all the very famous requests. So that is what these databases are. So the connection will be uh, the request and the response. If uh, Facebook is connected, a request. If we request for some data, it will uh, fetch from the database and it will respond to us. Uh, it is independent of whatever devices. If we update uh, some stuffs in one device, it will be reflected and synced to all the devices. So that's the plus point of using API. So there are a lot of nitty gritty things uh, people talk about API rather using direct database. But API is really a cool thing. Uh, so this is the API and this is how the API works So now Why to use API? People ask uh, I read about in a lot of articles uh, People talking about using a direct access to database rather using API It is a really good question, but the thing is there are a lot of constraints and a lot of uh, disadvantages using uh, data connections to database in applications or softwares. 
uh, not in softwares but in applications it is not really good thing to do because uh, there are some advantages using API which is uh, reusability of code I mean which means the reusability of data we need not to uh, create a different code base for different uh, devices uh, all we need to do is to create a single code base single uh, model a single schema of code base in our application backend and after we created the backend as an API uh, we can pass that API uh, all over our devices and we can use that API uh, in our different devices programming languages so it's because uh, in Java the people use uh, in native mobile Android application they use Java and uh, when it comes to uh, iOS they use Swift so there are a lot of programming languages are independent but we it's something and uh, with something uh, it's really good the portability of code it's also a really good thing to do portability of code which means uh, we need not to uh, declare uh, separate models for separate devices a single model which can be used in all of the devices and the last thing is security security is the main feature uh, on using API because uh, we all know that APK can be reverse engineered to code shocking right now yeah APK can be reverse engineered to code using Android Studio so that we can uh, if we use connection strings for our database what actually happens means we can we will pass the uh, server name username database name and also the password this is really a mess thing we should not do that if someone knows our database configurations they can access our database they can do anything they want they can delete your records they can drop your records they can put a vulgar they can hack everything that you build so it's the biggest security issue by using the API we are going to host our web uh, application into the server the server takes care of it uh, server is uh, really hard to hack and also the credentials for the server will be separated from us we only know our server credential no other can view all we are going to pass or all we are going to distribute is the only API which is application programming interface so the three things reusability of code portability of code and also security reusability of data I'm sorry bigger pattern so here uh, I'm coming to Visual Studio I'm going to create new project in new project I'm going to select the ASP.NET MVC project so instead of that I'm going to click the web API uh, I'm not going to use the uh, unit testing for this application so that I can uh, click the next button so I'm going to type the project name as well as the solution name so here I'm not going to use the git version control so I'm just going to create the ASP.NET MVC web application by the name of web API demo so you can also use Visual Studio uh, which is a little bit better than the Mac version of Visual Studio so this is the uh, uh, starting application and now it is just adding the NuGet packages it's prompting me to add some packages for the MVC application and it will also prompt me to add the uh, packages for web API yes it's just prompted me and I just accepted it so after the all the packages successfully added uh, what I'm going to do is to run the project uh, build and run the project so I just now I just build the project build succeeded now I'm going to run this project so in the local host at the URL of uh, here we are having an output 
uh, welcome to ASP.NET MVC 5.2 on Mono. So what is the output? So uh, uh, we'll just go through it. So here inside of the view, go to view, uh, we are having that uh, tag data. So inside the view data, we are passing that version name using that assembly and also the runtime which is mono or dotnet if you use visual studio it will show you as a dotnet but uh, in mac it's just using mono version of it so this is not our uh, goal and this is beyond the scope of this lesson and we are now i'm going to add the model add a file in the model so this is uh, basically a law system project which has a lot of laws, uh, law cases in law systems. Uh, so I'm going to create a law system and also I'm going to add some properties over here and the properties will be public uh, string or integer uh, a law ID and property string law name and property string law detail so I'm getting error I don't know why that's because Oops, yeah, law details and law code. This I already deployed this application. So that I can uh, demo these stuff. And finally law code. Oh, so oops, I just entered all the properties inside of the constructor, which is a bad thing. It's not the right syntax. So I'm going to cut that and paste it outside of the constructor, which is inside the class. Now I don't need the constructor anymore. So that's it. And these are all the fields in the database. And this is a law system is the table. Uh, I think I hope you guys know the database consists of tables tables consists of rows and columns and the rows is also known as fields I'm sorry columns is also known as fields uh, the fields are law ID law name law detail and law code so I'm also going to add the DB context which is actually uh, used to configure our database using the law system So law system db context. So I just created law system. But what I'm going to do is to create uh, inherit the db context. Oops, uh, uh, no, it's not right. Mm, let me quick fix that. Oops, I'm just doing it in constructor again. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to type the DB context. I'm going to inherit from the system dot entity. It's not showing the system dot entity. The reason uh, is uh, yes, obviously the reason is I haven't installed the entity framework yet. So uh, to install entity framework, go to the solution uh, assembly file and uh, right click and add new get packages I'm sorry I'm struggling here because uh, uh, Visual Studio Mac is very new for me I'm a Visual Studio Windows user so uh, yeah here it is uh, entity framework add package so I'm going to accept that so entity frame successfully added now what I'm going to do is to right click and quick fix to get that uh, appropriate package for this one which is using system.data.entity instead of the data context we have all the methods to configure our database 
and also the classes. So now I'm going to create a constructor. Instead of the constructor, I'm going to use the base superclass method. Inside of the base method, I'm going to use the uh, default constructor name. Um, I'm sorry, default connection string name. So here inside of the config section, I'm going to paste the connection string so that I'm just going to expand the sticky note where I already copied the lot of snippets, code snippets, which will be save our time for this video. So this is the connection string. Um, this is the name of the connection string and the connection string has the server name, user name and the uh, passwords, DDB name uh, oops, I'm not going to show that connection string you can get the connection string from your hosting server in my case I'm using A2 hosting uh, because I don't want it to deploy this in local I just wanted to use uh, the A2 hosting uh, server uh, inside of the Windows Server, I just hosted my application and also the database. So here, so I just created and I'm going to save the file. I just copied that uh, connection string name and I'm going to paste it over here. So the next thing is going to be to create database set, DB set collection instead of the collection I'm going to use the model name which is the table that we are trying to create which is a law system and the property name is going to be the plural which is law systems this is not the fab bit of uh, uh, pronunciation you can uh, use more creative you want productive So DB context is the gateway to connect to database, but the DB set is actually used to uh, collect the data from the tables and models that we created. So basically DB context is the gateway between our database and our application and the DB set is for our table configuration. Now I'm going to create a controller so that you can create your own empty controller I'm going to use to set the name for the controller as law system project okay click OK so it will take some time to create the law system project so here I'm going to instead of inheriting the controller I'm going to inherit API controller so right click quick fix using system.web.http uh, which is particularly used for uh, using web APIs. So I'm going to reveal the uh, action result which is used by the controller, default controller. So before uh, the stuff I'm going to explain a couple of things. First one is going to be the route config which uh, and second one is web config. So route config is something uh, where our controller's route and action will be configured. So there is a routes.map route. We have a URL which has a pattern which is controller slash action slash ID. So if we add uh, so the default connection is going to be the home and index. So the web config uh, API config has the same uh, route but the difference is uh, we are going to add the API before the controller and ID so that using that API controller we are going to access all our database so before that I'm um, having a code snippet I'm just going to use uh, through this entire video course to for the sake of saving my time and also your time so uh, what I'm going to do is to create a loss DB system DB context and create an object name for that. So object name is going to be DB new law system DB context. 
I just set the access specifier as private. And now I'm going to quick fix to import the models namespace so that I can access the LotDB context class. And then I'm just going to copy the another action. But actually, it is a method. But when it comes to MVC, we should call that as an action. So here in this project case, it's not loss, uh, it's loss system. And uh, the DB set also, it's not loss, it's loss systems, not loss system. Yeah, we just declare the property name for the DB set as loss systems, not system. Uh, you can also check that out uh, inside of that, inside of that law db context. So I queryable method is the interface queryable inside of that queryable method collection. I'm sorry, that's not a method. It's a collection. Inside of that collection, we are just passing the type law system so that it can access all the fields inside of the law system type. Uh, I mean the properties. And uh, it can access law ID, law name, law detail, law code, and the get loss uh, method name, and uh, the DB is the DB context object name, and the table name, which means the data set, data set name, is loss systems. So this is actually the action used to fetch all the data, not a single data, all the data from the database. Uh, for any devices or any platform as in JSON or XML data. So the DB set loss system, uh, which consists of uh, and now, so now I'm going to copy that and paste this additional code, which is uh, law So here uh, we are using the attribute which is response type and which is inherited from the HTTP directions and the type of the assembly uh, which is an reflection assembly reflection method where we are accessing the law system. So it's really quite interesting and I had HTTP action result because uh, normally in controller we use action result by in ISTTP action result, it is specifically designed to use the web API request response. So in this case, the request will be uh, via a specific record, which means we are not only going to pass the uh, action and controller name, also we are going to pass the ID, uh, which is integer ID. The law system from the law system. Uh, which has the db dot law systems dot find law systems is the um, law system is the, the class name and the law is the object name and it is uh, the find method will fetch the data a specific record from the database and it will retrieve uh, that specific record to us so So, so if a law is equal to null, it will return not found. But if law written OK, then it will return the actual data for us, which is a specific record. So I'm going to close all the files. So now I'm going to open up uh, the postman. So the postman if you are not uh, you, if you don't have postman uh, i'm just going to clear the history if you don't have postman uh, you can go and surf around the internet just by typing uh, now i'm going to paste the url paste that send 
Uh, if you don't have a uh, postman, you can surf around the internet. Uh, you can install that as your software, uh, I mean desktop application, or you can use the Chrome extension just by clicking Add App in your uh, Chrome. So that's it. If I hit the request, there are a lot of uh, methods, get post put, but in my case right now, we are just going to use the uh, actual get request. So API loss, the URL that we defined in our action methods inside of our API controller. So uh, uh, send the data. So it will fetch, if we send the request, it will fetch all the data from the database. I already uh, put some dummy data, which is the crime cases like murder, misbehave, a lot of blah, blah, blah. So uh, it's quite interesting because it's, uh, it's retrieving the data as uh, JSON. And now I'm going to view the detailed view just by using the ID of the specific record to get the specific record. In ISTTP action result uh, performs the request and response according to the specific request, uh, I mean specific ID. It defines, uh, it will synchronously create and system dot net.http http response is the actual definition that uh, Visual Studio is providing for us but it's a lot more than that it will do a lot of more stuff than that so now I'm just going to use that ID and uh, just send the click button and it will throw us the uh, specific record just like that so uh, the the code is actually same I HTTP request, but the different thing is we are actually passing the type, uh, which is loss system. Uh, we are just passing the loss system class type, which is we defined inside of our model. Uh, in that model, we have a lot of fields, which is passed via the object uh, as the loss. So uh, we are using the DB context database object instead of the db set table name we are using add method add uh, uh, method is uh, very similar to the insert in the sql query so using that add method we are adding all the records that we are uh, posting uh, as a request there are a lot of fields there are a lot of rec uh, records to be uh, posted a lot of details uh, I think it will be a four column which has uh, details we are posting that records detail data via that object it will be passed uh, through that method and it will insert it into the database just like that and the db dot save changes is used to, to commit for, uh, to the database and created at route is the return type where it is a default api oops uh, we just uh, missed something it is a law id so this is uh, what uh, it will return new id is equal to law id and the loss so that's it If we try to create a new record from the postman, it is very similar to the get request URL, uh, API loss. So now I'm going to change that from get to post. So uh, go to the body instead of the raw section, just use JSON format of typing. So now I'm going to type the records I wanted to type. So after I typed all the records, uh, what I'm going to do is to send a request. So it will throw as uh, it will retrieve the data 
and the data is stored in the database so that I can use the uh, something like that 2006 uh, oops uh, yeah it's throwing 2007 the reason is I didn't change that from post to get so that's the error yeah it's just uh, incrementing one by one so all I need to do is to change that from post to get so to retrieve the data we are retrieving all the data instead of the data we are having the three tray stars which is repeatedly we submitted so this is what we have done chain snatch uh, which is uh, added thrice in our application so this is it so finally I'm going to close this application to make that much more real time I'm going to create a mobile application just by clicking new project instead of the multi-platform and instead of the blank forms app what I'm going to do is to create C Sharp application and web API mobile and I'm just going to use iOS click next using dotnet standard and I'm not going to use the version control and also the test project uh, just create click on create application so this is actually the application which is uh, created and uh, and it is adding some packages so it's going too long so I decided to uh, take this core uh, session uh, into two videos so this is it uh, this is how we can create a mobile application what I'm going to do is to create a boilerplate template for our mobile application in the next video so that I can uh, quickly explain what the actual concepts that we are going to implement in web API in mobile application so that's it thank you uh, thank you for your patience if you like this video please like subscribe and click the notification button and comment and share with your friends if you want a lot of cool stuffs and this video will continue to the next part uh, by the boilerplate design code of uh, the mobile application i'm not going to tell the ui stars so that i only going to explain so that's it that's the end of this video mm -hmm.